Good day, viewers. Welcome back to The Preaching Humanist with David Oliverio. That is I, unabashed atheism. I've been labeled and accused, not an accusation, but I've been told I was and have been and am an unabashed atheist. And I'm going to encourage everybody I can who is secular humanist atheist to be unabashed. Unabashed is fearless, no apologies, unashamed and unembarrassed. Let's talk about all four of these. Number one, fearless. Why be afraid of Christians? I run into fellow atheists, believe it or not, that are afraid to talk to Christians. My question is, what are we afraid of? Let me give you some little old preacher tales in my experience with people out when I talk all the time. Uh, number one, I've got a couple clients that work in a corporation as a personal trainer, both atheists, both very closeted. The CEO of this company, which I've known for years, I used to train him, a former client, and his very fundamentalist, evangelical, Pentecostal wife. And she's a proselytizer. So I asked my two buddies, one is a current uh, um client, and the other one is a former client, both atheists. I said, guys, have you talked to so-and-so's wife when she comes in to visit her husband, the CEO? And they looked at me with this look of intense fear, and they just shook their head and went, oh, 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 no, 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 I don't want to talk to her. There's this fear in their eyes of standing up to and proselytizing evangelical Christian. What are we afraid of? We have nothing to fear. These people believe in fairy tales. They believe in fables. They are childlike in their thinking. It's time we stand up and are unabashed. Number two, this happened not too long ago, went to my sister, my sweet little sister. She's a Baptist, evangelical, homeschool, fundamentalist type person, okay? And I went to her birthday party. And yes, all of her friends showed up. They were all Baptists from the church. And of course, usually they walk up to me and say, ah, David, you're David. This is Uncle David. This is uh, the big brother. So I'm sitting there discussing things with people, and they're all Christians. And I look up, and here comes this man, not much younger than me, made a beeline for me. He started walking toward me. And he didn't flinch. He walked right up to me and just stared at me. I stared right back and I smiled. I said, hello. He goes, you're David. I've heard about you. I said, oh yeah, hi. He goes, I'm the pastor of this church. There's this intimidation that I'm supposed to be afraid of because all these people know that this guy here, David Oliverio, is this unabashed atheist, secular humanist, and a firebrand. Somebody's out there as an activist. And he looked me right in the eye and he said, I'm praying for you. I said, wow. First of all, I said, hello, my name's David. Let's, in, you know, let's shake hands. And there was this look of intimidation in his eyes. Now, what did I do? I didn't back down. Looked him right back in the eye and smiled, stared him right in the eye until he said, oh, I'm praying for you. Folks, there is nothing to fear. I don't understand why so many of my fellow atheists run the other way and are afraid of Christians. People... They believe in fairy tales and fables. They're harmless, physically harmless to, to us. Number two, make no apologies. Do you know why we shouldn't make any apologies for being an overt atheist? Because we haven't done anything wrong. It is not wrong to be an atheist. It is not wrong to tell people you're an atheist. Christians do it all the time. They don't make apologies for being a Christian. Here's a good example for you. There's a young man, a millennial guy. I love the millennials. They have passion. They have knowledge. They're smart. They're educated. I love it. I love what they're doing. But this young guy had a YouTube video. He went into a particular church to Sunday school class, and he wanted to ask an atheist. It's the kind of stuff I do. He was a little different than me. He was a little bit embarrassed to be an atheist. So he went in there, and the Christians were asking him a question, asking him questions in the Sunday school class. This was on video. They asked him, what do you do for fun? What do you do? How do you find meaning in life? Where do you find joy and happiness if you don't know Jesus? Believe it or not, they ask you that. What a ridiculous question. Boy, do I fire back and give them reality and answers to that. He didn't do that. He said, well, you know, 
as if he was making an apology for being an atheist. He said, well, you know, I guess for me, I, I just sit in my room and smoke my cigar and drink my wine and listen to rock and roll music. That's what makes me happy. And I mean, they were eating this stuff up. That's what they want you to say. They want you to say, oh, I'm making an apology for being an atheist. I guess you as a Christian are happier than I am. And you have meaning in life, and I don't. And I get my meaning of life just listening to music and drinking wine and smoking a cigar. Well, come on. Make no apologies. Number three, be not ashamed. Now, Christians are not ashamed. I used to preach it. Romans chapter 1, verse 16, the apostle Paul allegedly I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it's the power of God and the salvation, right? Why are we ashamed? We should be unashamed of who we are. I think it's a privilege and an honor to wear my atheist t-shirt in public. I think it's a privilege and honor to be the few, not the chosen, (laughs) but the few and growing in numbers, thankfully, of us who have figured this stuff out, that these little Fairy tales and fables are unnecessary. Come on, they're childlike. We've matured, and we're better than that stuff called Christianity and the other religions. So be not ashamed. Number four, don't be embarrassed. Yeah, believe it or not, there are some atheists I've met that are embarrassed. They turn red. Now, I've just done some research in evolutionary psychology, biology, and I like to read, right? That's what I do. And I learn, because I didn't get to go to college years and years ago. I read all the time from smart people, right? Scientists and philosophers and so forth. Now, human beings have developed through uh, evolution, um, natural selection, this thing called shame and embarrassment, right? To show the hunter-gatherer tribe and so forth when a member is doing something wrong or lying or cheating, right? And it's called blushing and embarrassment, right? An indicator of what's going on here within. So I went to a library, well, not long ago, to take a free computer class because everybody knows David Oliverio is a freaking moron with technology. That's why I have producers and people that do all that for me. So I can just yak. So I went into this classroom at this library and I was the only one that showed up. It was myself and the instructor, a young millennial man, probably 29, 30 years old, intelligent, computer science degree, all that stuff. So he went over little basics of computer technology for me, kind of went over my head, but anyway. And then I said, hey, can you check my little channel uh, and help me understand computers a little more? I want to check this and this and this or whatever. And I said, I'm an atheist activist. As soon as I said atheist, he blushed, he turned red, he got embarrassed. And I said, oh, well, if you're a believer, you know, Uh, No offense, I didn't say I'm sorry because I make no apologies for what I do. (laughs) But I say, you know, no offense, but I'm an atheist activist. He goes, well, very sheepishly. He goes, well, I'm an atheist too. I I just don't like to talk about it. And he turned red and blushed. What is he ashamed of? I said, dude, you're amongst friends. I'm an atheist too. Don't be ashamed. Don't be embarrassed. There's nothing at all to be embarrassed for and about being an atheist. We give religion and Christianity too much respect. I will go on record saying I have zero respect for Christianity. I didn't say Christians. I care for the people. The belief system, I have zero respect. We don't need any of it. We've outgrown it. Our morals are better. So don't be ashamed. Uh, And here's another one. I see this on Facebook posts and so forth, and videos, and it's funny, satire. I like that too, making fun of Christianity, of course. But a lot of the things I see on Facebook from fellow atheists, they show like two proselytizing Christians coming to their door, and you see these atheists running in fear and horror, running as fast as they can away from the Christians or Jehovah Witnesses or Mormons or whatever, in fear, trying to run away from them. Why run? Why turn around and stand your ground? My whole attitude when I talk to believers now is, it's 2019. You actually are still a Christian? Why? Why? It's 2019. We have modern science and technology that have progressed past all this and given us natural explanations. And just because I don't know how it all began doesn't mean your God did it. I get that all the time. Here's another one. Let's not run away. 
Let's not be afraid. Let's not be ashamed. Let's not be eaten up with fear. Make no apologies. Stand your ground. Look him in the eye and tell him, no, I don't need that. I've progressed past that. So, yes, I am a bold, out-of-the-closet, unabashed atheist. I will encourage everybody I know that is in our tribe and camp to do it. We've got to push back. We've got to show the world that it's okay to be atheist and we're good moral people. We want to make positive changes in this world with our beautiful philosophy of secular humanism. All right, thank you for watching The Preaching Humanist with David Oliverio. Have a wonderful day.